should Mondrian's modern art be displayed? Welcome to Mark and Pete. Here's a thought. Moving in the right circles. P.A. Mondrian was an artisan whose work is owned by millionaires and he inspired modern artistic circles because he painted lots of squares. Yes, an artwork by the abstract Dutch painter P.A. Mondrian remarkably has been hanging upside down in various galleries for over 75 years. What an extraordinary discovery. Now, Mondrian, known for his geometrical designs and drawings, is something that is very distinctive, and he pioneered very much uh, a particular modern movement. Now, what I would say here is, is that the piece in question, New York City One, is an adhesive tape version of the similarly named New York City painting by the same artist. Now, Clergyman Pete, I ask you the obvious question, which is, what do you think about this uh, particular error that has been occurring for nearly 75 years? And more importantly, what do you think of his work overall? Well, I think this error of displaying it upside down is part of the art. I think when you talk about someone responding to a piece of art, they are, of course, responding to the initial artist's vision and what he did to produce it. But there are always other people involved, the people who put it on the wall, the owner of the gallery, where they display it and the lighting. And sometimes with some artists, there's a whole team of people that the artist directs to carry out his orders in order to produce the art. And little imperfections in that are all a part of the art. And indeed mistakes that they make. And, uh, you know, the way that, for example, in some cases, uh, the paint dries which could be due to outside influences, nothing to do with the artist himself or herself, is part of the art. So in this case, the bloke that took it out of the box the wrong way up is still part of the way that the art was produced. And if people have been seeing it and appreciating it that way, I think that that is the true form of the art. The wrong way up, according to Mondrian and others who you know, knew the way that he intended it, they're wrong. Mm. because it's the way that it's been appreciated has been the other way up. Well, it is. oh, yes, you asked me also, what is my vision? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I, I, looking at uh, Mondrian's early work, I think he was obviously a, a, a very talented painter, artist. I, I think that his uh, move into geometric shapes and uh, producing those looking like nothing in particular uh, is a complete waste of time but i don't think oh i don't think that there's no art in it i think there is some art in it but there's no particular skill and i see art that has to have some skill in it well and he has skill but that's yeah. not not the skill the skill that he had in getting people to buy for example in this case uh, new york city one yeah. buying um a, a canvas with bits of sticky tape on it <laughs> yes. um i think that the real skill is conning the art gallery and the art establishment and ultimately the general public uh, into believing that this has any sort of value but in doing that yes. it has value the art is the skill of the con man so in that way Mondrian, brilliant con man mm. i um greatly admire him for that well i'm going to have to disagree with you i think the mondrian Yes, very much in his early career was extremely dexterous. He was very artistic and perhaps in some cases, like a lot of artists in their early career, um, really developed the sense of realism. But of course, what he did over time is he influenced a geometrical style that not only influenced art, but also the fields of design, architecture and fashion. And that's the thing that I think that to me, he brought something different. Now, one of the things to note here about Mondrian is that he set up um, essentially um, the idea of really experimenting with cubism. And what really helped also was this um, really uh, development style in a non-representational form, which he termed neoplasticism. 
So <clears throat> like a lot of artists, it's about how you interpret the world. Now, what's interesting is, is that where, if you look at his early work, he was producing landscapes, semi-realistic sort of pictures of trees and many other things. He came to really sort of define things in a different way. Now, eventually, what happened was, and what we now know Mondrian's work for, for those people who like his work, will see that he limited his vocabulary to three primary colours, red, blue and yellow, and then three primary values, black, white and grey. And those were really um, sort of structured in horizontal and vertical lines where colour and form were, were actually then filled in. But here's the key. Many architects have been inspired what Mondrian did, particularly with the balance of structure, form and colour. And in many ways, if for those people who've looked at art in subsequent years, so basically when Mondrian died during the 1940s, going through the 50s, 60s, 70s and even 80s, many other artists from graphic design, fashion and others actually drew upon the inspiration of how you brought in form, structure and design on magazines, in fashion, whether it be the cut of the cloth, etc. And if you look back through history, I think he has been highly influential in abstract art. And that's why I think that whilst you look at any given piece, you may not like necessarily this particular piece that um, sadly has been hung upside down. But many of his other work started to sort of experiment with shape and form in a much more geometric, clever way. And that's why I don't necessarily say one particular piece stands out. I think it's his approach that influenced so many other people in other realms of art and design. And that's why I mm. believe that he definitely is an individual that should not be diminished. I know that clergyman Pete hanging upside down was perhaps not too much of a concern. In fact, in your case, I guess you think he should well, be facing the wall. But <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the thing is, you say, uh, uh, how should it, how, you might ask the question, well, how should it be displayed? You say, do I think it should be facing the wall? Well, I think it, <laughs> it, it should be displayed however people like it, because yes. I think people's appreciation of art, uh, as I was saying, trying to say, it, it is, it, it is um, subjective. And, uh, it is subjective. Like it, as it yes. was, why, why shouldn't it be that way? But the very fact that it could be hung upside down and no one <laughs> noticed uh, shows to me yeah. how his real art was being a con man and what you, you were saying I mean con man I use you know it's sort of a pejorative word it's say um, an influencer we might call such a person today yes uh, if he was influential because of his ability as a salesman and a con man he sold the idea and I yeah I think that that was his artistic gift uh i don't think the skill or the uh the artistic merit of the particular paintings or in this case uh in london uh, um, i was gonna say london new york city one with the uh, sticky tape uh, there's no particular skill in just applying mm. the tape but in uh convincing people that there was artistic merit to this that was the art the art yeah. Well, is in him yeah. portraying it and i i think that this uh that this has been taken up as well the idea that you can influence someone into believing in something that is utterly worthless simply by the attitude that you have to it uh has influenced a lot i mean it's taken up in politics and all of the areas of life the idea of the spin doctor in politics and I, I think that he uh, he's ne not necessarily influenced that himself, but that sort of idea has come to be played. So uh, I think uh, I think yes, he's been very influential, but I don't necessarily think. In fact, I don't think that that means he was any bloody good at producing paintings. Well, in <clears> fact, <throat> I think as he went on his career, yes. he got worse and worse, <laughs> but managed to convince people he was better yeah. and better. And in that way, he was brilliant. Well, of course, he's obviously turned your world upside down. But here's my thought. <laughs> and that is, if you do happen to find a piece by Mondrian, for goodness sake, send it my way. <laughs> I'd love to know what the and look, and uh, our think listeners think bad. about this. I mean, do they like his yes. work? Do they feel that maybe actually this is the way that 
you know, we should now sort of praise him greatly for, for the achievements that he's done and the influence that he's had, yes. not just through yes. the 20th century, but even today, it's still yes, felt. Yes. Yes. Or do you think he's just a con man? And if you do find a piece of Mondrian's work, you think it looks rubbish, trying it the other way up. Maybe yeah. that's how it was intended. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe and comment. And don't hold back in the comments. Catch you next time.